Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo992 and today we're back from the brand new video. Today is our video, it's time to move away from two self-centred and stupid decisions made by two players and get back to actually talking about the football because Rangers are on a fantastic run right now and they're about to meet Benfica in the battle to see who goes top of our group? Oh, it's a big game, the more of people. But before we go any further on with the preview, as always, just a friendly wee reminder if you do enjoy the channel and you enjoy the content, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It's free, doesn't cost you a penny, and it just helps us all on our way. But speaking of on our way, we are off to Portugal to battle Benfica. So let's just get on with it then, shall we? And starting off with the old oppositional preview, we face a team that has maximum points like us after two games in Europa League group stages. However, unlike us, this is a team that's actually sitting second in the league as of the recent game. And just right off the bat, people, it needs to be said, this team that we faced in Mora is no bad at kicking the old football about. Trust me, I wish I could be sitting here and saying the exact opposite, but fair is fair and all that. This team that we face is a fantastic football inside that are going ahead and trying to break an unbelievable European record because they want to try and use us the Mora as the team they break the European record on by going 24 home matches in Europe unbeaten. That's a ridiculous record right there and it shows you what we're actually up against. And what's mental about that is there's a real argument that could be made that this Benfica side now is better than the last couple of years that's held that European record because you look at the recruitment in the summer, right? They were always good going forward and really taking teams to task, right? They've got talented attacking players for days, truly. If one pops out, another one comes in, still get it kicking the football about. But defensively, they went ahead and made two signs this season that I think has bumped them back up and is why they are looking so dangerous and why they are looking so good this season. The first signing was Vertonghen from Spurs. Now, I'm sure some of you will recognise the name, but this is a lad that's played a lot of years in the Premier League for Spurs that led them to a Champions League final. He has over 100 caps for Belgium. And the guy new sitting next to him is Nicholas Otamendi from Man City, who won player of the season the year they went ahead and got over 100 points. So I, they're a no bad outfit, this mob, that we're actually playing tomorrow. However, there is something that needs to be said, and you may have noticed it at the start of the old preview. I say that this team, the Mora, is now second in the league after their most recent game because before this game was played they had a 100% win ratio slaying and Michael Bay and people it was it was annoying actually breaking this team down but in their most recent game they came up against Boa Vista who was nearer to the bottom half of the table before the game and not only did Boa Vista manage to slow them down and stop Benfica's 100% win ratio in the league, it wasn't as if they held on and clung in and parked the bus for a 0-0 or a 1-1. No, 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 no. They didn't take one point off Benfica. They went ahead and pummeled them 3 none, taking all three points and stopping Benfica dead in their tracks. Literally from the first whistle to the last, which stuck in, went after them and just outplayed them. And that right there, that loss in their most recent game allowed Sport Lisbon to go top and it moved Benfica down to second. But diving in and looking into the game of football, how did they get caught so badly? Well, I think the perfect way to summarise it for all of us watching today's video is say it is very, very reminiscent of Warburton S football. Now, for everyone watching who saw every second of every game, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And I do apologise for bringing it up, but it genuinely fits perfectly if you look into that last game. I mean, Benfica had 70% of the ball, completely dominated the passing, mounted passes completed, passing accuracy, all that. They dominated, but what they didn't dominate was actually creating opportunities. It was all safe possession. It was all in front of teams. It wasn't direct enough and it wasn't penetrating. And all Bo Vista done was sitting and was well disciplined. Didn't they get suckered? Didn't they come and pressurise in the football? And ended up just catching them on a counter-attack because Benfica, in that game, they dominated the ball, conceded 15 shots with seven of them on target and only managed to muster seven shots on their own and only got two on target, hence why I said Warbit and S. And I bring that game up not only because it was the most recent game coming in to our run, but because it perfectly summarises the exact type of team 
Benfica actually is. The ball hogs people, they utterly love dominating the football. That is just how they play. And I'm not sitting here, by the way, and saying that that is a massive flaw because when it works and when they are on it, they car teams open left, right and centre. And I mean, you just have to go back and check their most recent game in the Europa League versus Standard. Standard, instead of sitting in and instead of being a wee bit more disciplined, they were trying to put pressure on and they were literally chasing shadows all game and Benfica took them a task beating them 3-0 just passing around them honestly it was beautiful football but when you're looking at the games that they aren't going ahead and pumping teams which to be fair to Benfica is a bit of a rarity this season because they are truly having a fantastic season but if you're looking at the games that they have struggled they really seem to struggle against teams that are well organised that want to get suckered out to go ahead and chase them with the football that can take care of the football when they do get it and are very good on the counter attack that seems to be their glaring issue a perfect example of that is the only reason Benfica aren't in the Champions League right now is because they lost a Champions League playoff game in which they dominated the ball against 73 percent of the ball but they ended up losing the game 2-1 and that was only because they scored a 95th minute goal in the game as well by the way but again the same problems were there and I just think if you can stay organised and you don't get overwhelmed with the amount of times they pass it in and around the middle of the park you will get a chance or two against this very very high defensive line and I think that's the exact type of game we should be expecting to see them more and I think that is the game we will see. I'm expecting Benfica to have high 50s, maybe even high 60s percent possession in the middle of the park, playing some nice pretty football and I'm expecting Rangers to be sitting just a wee bit further off and when they do get the football trying to use it, a couple of wee passes then hitting in behind that high defensive line. I'm expecting Kent on one side and possibly even Brandon Barker on the other. The guy's in the European list for a reason and this is the exact type of game that you use a type A player like Barker or what he's capable of, what's his attributes. It's all about pace and I could see the two of them being a very, very busy the more if we're winning the ball back and going after them right away. Now, I just want to point out by the way that all this is easier said than done. This is a fantastic footballing team that we are playing the Mora and only two teams all season long has been able to slow Benfica down enough to take advantage of these vulnerabilities. But if two teams can do it, why can we? No dear. Yes, people, I'm wearing my optimism hat today, but that's the way I live my life, so I I'm gone with that. <laughs> and with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, that is the oppositional preview wrapped up in a neat little bow. That's everything you need to know about this fantastic Benfica side. Now though it is time to jump over and talk about what matters most to all of us here and that is of course Rangers because it's a bit of a weird feeling right now going into this game because we've had so much positivity now for what feels like so long. We've all been flying high and going into the next game, going into the next game but there is a wee bit of negativity around the side and we discussed that yesterday and we discussed it obviously at the start of the video but to me all that needs to get brushed to one side now, right? It's dealt with the club, dealt with it 100% correctly, wrapped up. It's been commended by the Scottish government the way Rangers handled this. So let's get refocused, no, let's not get distracted here. This football team is playing their heart and soul out for every one of us watching and I'm expecting to see the exact same going into this game the more. I mean, the European record under Gerard speaks for itself and this is a very, very loud bell that we are going to be facing the more. But it's one I think we'll relish actually going up against. And thankfully going into this game there's been no injuries or nothing to harm the actual team that's going to go out there and represent every single one of us on that part. So that right there is a massive, massive boost. The only other injury that we've got at the football club is obviously Big Cattage. But everyone else that's picked for the European squad is up there fighting for a spot. And it's very, very curious to see who's going to be actually selected because I think the midfielders that we do bring in are going to be able to, are going to need to be able to run a lot and, and, and stay disciplined, let's put it that way. But when they get the fit ball, they're going to need to pick the right passes because we're not going to get a lot of the ball. So when we do get it, it is going to need to be on a sixpence whenever we are going after them. So I think Stephen Davis may absolutely be massive in this game. Now, he sometimes flies underneath the radar, but his game management coming into this game, his ability to pick a long pass, he could be the key man. And speaking of key men, by the way, I think Alfredo Morelos is going to be in for a right tough time. The more a battle in Vertonghen 
and Otamendi. That's not a bad two centre-back pairing to actually have in terms of the physicality side of things. So I think his ability to get in front of them, hold them off, win us cheap free kicks, get the ball played off, link up the play is absolutely huge. If we are going to get anything out this game in terms of an attacking sense, he is going to need to be absolutely on it. And if you look at his past European games, you want to put it past a laddie to relish that battle there and go ahead and make some happen. Now the rest of the Rangers team I think pretty much picks itself, but the midfield three is going to be key. Again, we've already talked about Stephen Davis, but if Jacko is coming in here, he's going to we need to be a day a lot of work. And I think Glenn Kamara could return to the starting eleven, so we may see Scotty Arfield giving a wee rest in this game, which might be controversial, but I think when we do get the ball, we're going to need to use it correctly, and I think Jacko is a bit more safer, but Kamara is a bit more technical, so I think that balance of the midfield three will be what is needed in this game, but truthfully, that's it, there's no major injury news, thankfully, Touchwood Long, may that continue, or that to actually break down, it is a massive game of football, it will probably set the tone for the entire Euro Europa League group stage, in terms of who's finishing first, and second, but aye, all eyes on us. Now, all that's left for us today is go ahead and give our prediction on the on ons for the game. Now, you know just a little bit more about the actual fixture. You've also been updated that everyone is good to go for the game. What is your thoughts ahead of this game tomorrow? What is your predictions for the game? Whilst you guys are hopefully getting involved down there in the comments, I will give you mine very, very briefly. You all know what type of game I'm expecting it to be, but I do think we will come away with the actual win here, and again, that might be the optimism hat talking, but I just like the way we look on the counter-attack. I think we suit this European counter-attack in a lot better, and I think that's why we're doing so well under Gerrard. So I think we're going to catch some cold, and I actually think we're going to go ahead and win this game. Rangers 1, Benfica 0. Aye, I'm going with a clean sheet. I don't care. Now, for my one and only goal scorer in this upcoming game, I'm going to look no further than your man... Ryan Kent. I think there will be a counter-attacking opportunity for him and I think he will be vital. He missed his chance at the weekend, but can he take it in this game? I think the laddie will respond and quiet his doubters once again with a performance. And again, I think it is going to be a swift counter-attack and your man's going to go through very Aberdeen-esque, actually, along with that bragger goal. But that's me, done and dusty. That is my prediction. On e, on e, on. Now, all that's left for me today is thank you for taking a wee bit of time out your day to sit here and listen to me pratter on and talk about Rangers. Hopefully, you did get involved down there in the comment section below. But as always, take care of yourselves, people. I'll see you in the next video. All the best and bye-bye.